So we've seen that we can use printf to uh, work with um, variables that we wish to print out. And printf essentially just takes its first parameter, which is this string, and it will just go and print out the characters until it sees this percent sign and it takes that as a conversion specifier and it knows to interpret this value in memory as a certain type either a character or a floating floating point or an integer slash decimal octal hexadecimal um, let's look at how we can use printf to print out um, floating point numbers so I'm going to go to this link here or you can copy and paste what's there in your um, on the lecture and I think we have it here so what I'll do is there's the output I'll say create a new paste based on those lines 1 through 12 and I get the raw code so I'll control A to select everything, control C to copy. I'll take this back over to code blocks and I'll paste it with a control V. Notice that this is not formatted. One of the things that you can do with um, code blocks is that it has a number of plugins. Most of these I don't do anything with. The one I find most useful is this source code formatter and it will format it to a particular standard, this so-called A style. And notice that it does the indentation um, as you'd expect. Um, so I do want to, I want you guys to certainly um, Make sure your code is formatted and, and easily read with sufficient white space and indentation. So now we have these one, two, three, four different variables that are declared as floating point values. We've initialized x, y, and z to the values that you see here. So notice that this one here has a 1e3, so it's in scientific notation. Um, and so this essentially is 1 times 10 to the third. Right, this is 1,000. So when I add these three values, I'm going to add 1,000 plus 45 plus the, the two remaining parts of the fractions that you see here, the 0.44 and the 0.11. So it looks like it's 1,045. 1,045.555. Notice that there's a 0, 5, 4 in addition. Where did that come from? Um, it's one of the challenges and one of the more interesting aspects of floating point numbers is that floating point numbers don't or often will not precisely represent the values that you want them to represent. Um, we'll see how floating point numbers are encoded so that there is in fact a loss of accuracy. So there's often some risk in trying to compare one floating point number to a floating point number since the encoding is often going to be an approximation of the true value. If you wanted more precision um, then you could use DOU double precision floating point numbers and even though it's the same values notice that the sum on those values um, is the, the, the sum, the total that you would expect, the 0.555. So you have to be careful with floating point numbers, especially when comparing them in conditionals. Um, floating point numbers um, may not always precisely represent the value that you would think you would have. Now, um, let's talk a little bit about the percent %f. This percent %f whether you're just simply printing out a floating point number or a double. Regardless of it being a double or a float, um, let's try this. First I'll make it a, a, an LF. You can think about this as a long floating point value. And if I 
run this again, you'll see that it's the 1045.555. If I make this a float and run it, it's a 1045. So it doesn't change anything. So percent %LF really doesn't come into play until you're using scanf. So printf is indifferent to the LF versus the percent %F. Um, but if you're using scanf to read in values, I'll say more about this later, if the value that you want to read in is a plain old float, then you would use a percent %x or ampersand %x, the address of the value, and you would use an f, a percent %f. If it's a double, then you would have to use the LF um, to read that value in as a double. So we'll talk more about scanf later, but, but make, a, make a note to yourself that scanf um, is sensitive to whether or not you use percent %f or percent %lf, um, and that this type has to match. That if it is a float, then use percent %f, and if it is a double, um, you know, double z, then you want to make sure that those two types match. So it matters in scanf, doesn't matter um, in printf. Some of the other things that you can do um, with these floating point values, let's change this to uh, maybe uh, percent %e, scientific notation. So in scientific notation, it's 104555 um, times 10 to the third. If I just say as a floating, regular old floating point number, it'll do this. Um, it'll print it out as a standard floating point number. So you can choose to print it out in scientific notation by making this a percent %e. Um, also worth noting, let's make this a little bit longer. So if I want to limit the number of decimals that get shown in the answer, um, what I could do is something like this. I can say um, 0 0.3. And what you'll see is that there are three decimals, and it does the rounding for you, 0.556. If I just want to use two decimals, it will give me um, just a 0.56. So it is doing the rounding for you. So whatever comes after the decimal will also be the number. It references the number of places to use or to display in the final answer. Um, this zero here, if I get rid of it, notice that it still ends up giving me the 0.56. Um, so what this value is for is if I want to tell this um, printf to use 10 spaces to print out my um, floating point value, then it will give me those 10 spaces. So let me show you what that looks like. You'll see that this value is um, kind of in, printed or displayed in 10 spaces. So in order to better see um, that this is being stored in 10 spaces, I'll go ahead and just kind of copy line 13 with a number of um, just kind of placeholders so that when we look at this, You'll see that there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It uses 10 spaces to print out this value. Now, notice that this doesn't require 10 spaces, so there's, but it uses, it just fills it up with spaces. But if I said just use one space, it will go ahead and compensate, and what you'll see is that it will just print out the entire value. It won't try to 
um, limit what gets displayed there, but it will print out the entire um, um, non-fractional part of, of, of that uh, floating point number. And finally, if I tell it to use 12 spaces to print out the result, right, print out uh, total, it will certainly use those 12 spaces. Um, and if I wanted this to backfill or to drop in zeros to the left of that, what I could do is put a zero here. And so when I run this, you'll see that there are zeros that are placed to complete, um, to fill out that, that uh, the additional kind of left side of that, that value. So the placeholders, instead of a blank space, are now, it's, it's showing up as just simply zeros. So what we've seen is that you can print out floating point numbers, you can print out double precision floating point numbers, you can control the number of decimal places, you can print out scientific notation um, formatted floating point numbers, and you can also kind of, I suppose, backfill or um, put in zeros, fill up uh, the left space with uh, the left of the, uh, the quotient with the zeros by just simply plugging in a zero.